Hello? Hello? Just testing if anyone out there is actually tuning into this. Not many followers right now, but um, just wanted to say hello and uh, welcome to my new live streaming page, Yam Yam Gaming. Now, I'm just going to get that name out of the way straight away. It's called Yam Yam Gaming because, for those who aren't familiar, I'm not a brummie, and neither are a lot of my friends who you see at the events. Uh, we're phonetically known as uh, Yam Yams because we say, Yam an idiot, as in, you am an idiot, you're an idiot, Yam an idiot. So, Yam Yams. That's the technical term if you're from the West Midlands. Thank you very much. So, yeah, Yam Yam Gaming. Um, I'm doing this because basically I've started doing a lot of live streams recently I'm posting up videos of my retro gaming adventures I suppose going to events you know my hardware pickups you know the various things that I'm doing and um, I thought I would just well basically condense it all down into one place and let everybody just view them at, my, at their leisure I have trouble finding my um, my videos at the best of times as well so I thought well if I do it this way at least they're all in one place um, I'm hoping to follow this up with some other hardware pickups I've got coming up soon and um, <laughs> as you're going Lee you're alright mate and uh, I thought well let's put it all in one place let's do a few hardware videos and if people like it I'll keep doing my, uh, my video uploads here might start doing a bit more streaming um, I've got some interesting stuff in my retro collection I mainly like to talk about retro gaming anyway I'm not comfortable on camera I'll be honest so the majority of the time you're going to be seeing my screen or you know the hardware that I'm covering um, and um, well if anyone wants to ask any questions on what I'm covering and anyone wants to see what I'm doing then just you know jump on ask a question and I'll reply to it even if you don't catch the live stream uh, I'll go on to you know I'll check all the messages afterwards and I'll try and answer your questions after that we'll just see where it goes so anyway um, I'm going to jump straight into it. My first topic for live streaming is this. It's the Amstrad GX4000. Um, for those people who don't know, the Amstrad GX4000, it was released as part of the third generation of consoles. came out around the time of the, uh, the NES and the Master System. Uh, I think 1990 was the release date for this. And it was basically Alan Sugar's one and only attempt to bring Amstrad into the console market. Uh, unfortunately, it flopped hard, and I mean real hard, um, because at that point it was already outdated with the 16-bit computers that were out and the 16-bit consoles on its way. So, the system itself, um, becoming a bit of a collector's piece now, not very many were made. It didn't do well. It is indeed Jim, yeah, as Jim has just rightly pointed out. Uh, the console itself, it's an 8-bit console and it is essentially a consoleized version of the Amstrad uh, uh, CPC-464 Plus, which was a slightly upgraded version of the CPC-464 that came out towards the dying days of the uh, the Amstrad. And um, But it's been neatly made into a, a cool little package. Now, as far as design goes, you can't really fault them for this. I mean... It's quite a, a cool little kind of spatial design that they've gone with uh, in uh, this kind of off-white colour. I think it looks quite nice. I mean, the design of the console itself is, is very nice. It's got a nice profile. It's very flat to the table. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It doesn't weigh a ton, but it doesn't feel cheap to the touch or anything like that. Um, it came with, basically, cartridge games like this. It's not a huge cartridge at all, probably about the size of um, about half the depth and about half the height of an Atari 2600 cartridge, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, but they are essentially just modified versions of the 464 Plus releases. Oh, you got the uh, joypad from the dev kit, nice one. Well, moving on to the joypads. The joypads themselves, they're pretty standard affairs. Um, very close to uh, what you'd expect to see on the from the NES um, at the time and the Master System. It's got the eight-way D-pad, which feels quite nice. You know, it uh, it moves to the corners nicely. It's very responsive, and the buttons are very tactile. You know, 
Um, so if you if you like the mass system or the NES, you pretty you get to grip with this pretty easily. And it's, it's actually very comfortable to hold in your hands. Hard to show you one-handed. I really need to get a tripod. But uh, it's very comfortable. It's got nice soft corners on the on the joypad itself. So, you know, very easy to get to grips with the games. Can be a bit strange playing some games that are intended for a joystick or a keyboard on this to start with. But once you actually get to grips with it, it's quite cool. So, uh, the package itself... When it was released, it originally came out, I think, for £99, and that was packaged usually with burning rubber, which is why there's millions of copies of this out there. Uh, it can't come with the two joy pads, which is something that was definitely gone in uh, in recent years from console releases, sadly. Um, and it came with the power supply and an RF cable. Now, RF, I'm not even going to bother with, RF on an LCD TV looks like shit, so I've done away with that for the sake of this video. <clears throat> the other thing worth mentioning is that the power supply that it came with was notoriously unreliable. It's severely underpowered and poorly made for this system, and it's responsible for frying several GX4000. So one of the best pieces of advice I can give if you pick one up is to buy an aftermarket one. I did one on the advice of some of the people who use this regularly online and bought one from RS. I think it was fourteen pounds, uh, and it, it it basically delivers. Uh, it's got a higher amperage and it's a lot more reliable and a lot more heat efficient than uh, than the standard one. Plus, it's also required if you want to run the flash cards. Now, as I said, it came with cartridge based games like this. There were only 26 games ever released for this system, which is ridiculously small, and they were all, uh, bar two I think, direct ports of the, the 464 Plus games. Uh, only slightly modified to allow them to be played with the joypad and no keyboard interaction, which is ridiculous. And there weren't many top titles amongst them. Getting hold of the cartridges is going to be your biggest hurdle with this, and with only 26 available, the cost you've got to pay for them, uh, besides the, the, the three or four most common titles, the amount you're going to pay for them is going to be r ridiculous money. You'll see millions of copies of Burning Rubber. You might see quite a few copies of Robocop 2 and some others, but beyond that, you won't see a lot. So, by far the best solution is to get yourself one of these. Now, obviously, anybody who's familiar with um, console gaming today, you'll know... Yes, I know, mate, I know. Um, a lot of people who've um, you know, been using consoles in recent years will know about Everdrives and things like that. Uh, this is the C4 CPC. It's basically an SD-based flash card for the, um, for the GX430. It's actually for the entire Amstrad family of computers. You can use it on the 6128, I think. Um, you can use it on the GX4000, and there's one of the others I think you can use it on as well. Um, but yeah, it's got, it's got some dip switch options on the front. I think you can change them for banks, different banks of, of games. But for this, you, you don't need to mess with it at all. Uh, it's only on special order. I think it cost me £70, I think it was. Uh, and it doesn't come with a case. I have actually ordered a case for it, a 3D printed case from somewhere else but it's not yet arrived. The uh, the C for CPC actually came from France and the 3D printed case for it is actually coming from Italy. So I'm still waiting on that. This arrived today, but the best thing about this is when it arrived, it was already prepared. It's got an eight gigabyte SD card in there. You can see there's a USB um, connection there for uh, development work and things like that. Although you're not really going to use that, and it came with an, uh, an SD adapter if you want to be able to put your own stuff on. But the best thing is, the guy who created it has actually sent it fully loaded. So I haven't got to go on and organise all my ROMs and all my and find the right images and things like that, which can be a bit of a pain, especially with the home computer-based games, which um, you know the libraries are massive; they're never formatted properly. You have to mess about with the different formats. All that's taken out of the equation for this. Now the reason this is such a cool thing is because, as I said, there was only over 26 games released for this thing, right? And yet the system itself is basically a 464 plus or 
with a little few tweaks, not far off of 6128. And the, the, the thing is, the games are actually pretty much directly compatible. So, what some clever people have done is, rather than limiting you to the stupid 26 games, they've taken apart a load of 464 and 464 plus enhanced games, and they've changed uh, small parts of the code, so you won't need a keyboard, because obviously there's nowhere to connect a keyboard to this. And they've made it so you can play the games completely using the joypads. They've assigned key commands to certain buttons on player one's joypad and player two's joypad, and even to the pause button, which is on the console on this, uh, and actually can be used as a reset button or a, an enter button, for example. As far as the console goes, I'll quickly just show you around it. You've got your two ports at the front there. You've got a headphone jack to the side. There is a, that is actually an analog port, which was never actually used for anything as far as I know, uh, sadly. Uh, it would have been nice to have used it for some analog games on this. There's an RJ11 port there, which was used for a dedicated light gun for this system. Although they only released, I think it was two light gun games for it, which were Operation Thunderbolt and something else. And obviously with an LCD TV, I won't be able to use that anyway. I may pick one up in the future if people bother to convert all the light gun games from the, from the Amstrad series, uh, then I may do it. And then going around the back, very carefully, you've got two power sockets, which is strange. The first one is a 5 volt socket, and the second one is an 11 volt socket. Now what it is, they intended you to be able to use this with several display devices, including Amstrad monitors. And what, they, what they'd what done is basically, so you only had one power lead running from the wall, they had it so you could power your monitor, and then run a 5 volt connection into here, so you've only got one power lead from the wall, which is quite a nice trick. Although these days it's not that practical. So instead I've got the dedicated wall socket there running into the 11 volt socket. This PSU is actually only a 9 volt PSU but it's got a higher amperage which is needed for the C4 CPC. And as far as outputs go there's an RF connection on the side there which we're not using. And very unusually, uh, only this and about two other systems I think had it was it comes with SCAR to standard and it is RGB SCAR. Uh, I think the CDI was the only other system I know of that had SCAR as a standard output. Um, so I've connected it up via that. Now I'm going to warn in advance before I start showing any of the games. Um, the way TVs respond, how are you going, Benny? You're right, mate. Thanks for joining my page. Um, this TV reacts a little bit funny to four to three aspect signals and also because I couldn't find any of my good SCART cables I've got one of these multi piece together SCART cables that's going in and it's SCART here going to standard RCA inputs on the side of the TV so occasionally when I reset the console and start a game it will compact it to half a screen so if, if it does I'll have to like reset it and then try and get it to launch full screen again that's not the fault of the system that's just me using bad cables that i've got available at the moment and the way this tv responds to it so so um yeah that's the system um the need for games isn't there because i've got the uh, c4 cpc and like i say it is fully loaded so we have got hundreds of games to choose from so i think yeah, let's play a two's joypad there's player ones, and you can see on the menu there, when it loads up, you're presented with this rather nice, uh, it's, it's not a graphical demo, but it, it has got a nice uh, text effects. And at the very top there, we'll go into plus games. These are games that were only released for the GX4000 and the 464 Plus. <laughs> good point, Matt, good point. So we'll just jump in there, and you'll see these are the games that were released for it. You had Barbarian 2, Batman the Movie, Burning Rubber, which was packaged with this system. Uh, quite a good racing game, actually. I'm not sure if it had any enhanced features from the Plus over the standard 464. I'm not sure, but a couple of these titles did. Just basically gave slightly better graphics on title screens and slightly better music, but uh, no major extra features. Um, yeah, every system was packaged with Burning Rubber. Um, but really they should have packaged it probably with Robocop 2 which was a much better game 
although difficult as shit. No way, Gareth. I am not playing Robocop 2. It drives me insane. <laughs> so, I mean, you can see the list there. It, it, there's some pretty good titles there, and they are the, 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 the Amstrad 464 games, and there's, there's nothing stellar amongst that list. Barbarian 2, decent game. As good as the Commodore 64 version. Uh, Batman the Movie, Burning Rubber. It's a decent racing game. Although the controls are slightly awkward because you've got two bright buttons there. And instead of remapping it so one of these was Accelerate, um, it's up on the joypad. So you have to hold, hold up and then press left and right to steer, which is a little bit of hell on your thumbs. But still a good game to play anyway. It's a good racing game. Uh, Copter 271, I think, was some kind of um, choplifter clone. Uh, Crazy Cars 2. Um, Dick Tracy, very average platformer. Fire and Forget 2. Uh, Clax, good puzzle game. Anyone who's played that will know. Mystical, Navy Seals. I seem to remember that on the Commodore 64 back in the day. Uh, pretty run of the mill, not too bad. Uh, no Exit, not familiar with that. Operation Thunderbolt, it's actually a very good port for the GX4, well, for the Amstrad 464. Um, and like I say, that's one of the few games you can use the light gun for if you can get your hands on it. Um, Pang, it's actually quite a good port of Pang, and it's two-player. I might launch that up in a second. Uh, Panzer Kickboxing, I used to play that a lot on the Atari ST back in the day, but the port for this is actually very graphically good, at least. Uh, pinball Magic, not a bad pinball game. Plotting, not sure about that. Tennis, Robocop 2, I'm not going to play it. It's ridiculously hot. It, it, it hard, it's stupidly hard. Uh, Skeet Shot, that's one of the other light gun games. And you've got Switchblade, which apparently is quite um, a good title for the Amstrad. Now, I'll, I'll be honest here, back in the day, I have very, very little experience with the Amstrads. Uh, I was a Spectrum, I was a Specky boy, we were a Spectrum family. My friends mostly had Commodores or Spectrums. Nobody had an Amstrad apart from some of the poorer kids, strangely. Um, my wife actually had an Amstrad, which we've now still got upstairs, which is which is quite cool, with the green screen monitor. Um, so a lot of these games she's familiar with, I'm not. Um, I'm just, I've literally, I, I like this because this is an accessible way to get into Amstrad games. I mean... Consoles and using joy pads become second second nature for gaming now. It's pretty much what we you know the way we grew up with dedicated games. You know as much as we we got into our home computers and enjoyed programming on them, it was all about the games. And a joystick wouldn't cut the mustard for long, only having one fire button and not being suitable for all games. So this is actually a very good way to get into Amstrad Gaming because you've got the entire library at your fingertips. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. It is indeed, David. I'll give Switchblade a try in a bit, Gareth. Um, I'd like to try it out because it's supposed to be a pretty good platformer. So I'm going to give that a whirl. Um, so yeah, so if you've never had an Amstrad and you don't want the efforts of uh, unreliable tape decks or stupid proprietary monitors and things like that, this is a really good way to go about getting into Amstrad Gaming. It's a cool little system. Um, they go for anywhere between about 50 and 100 pounds usually on the internet, depending on the condition. Um, I'm very lucky. Um, Dave from the, uh, Dave who's on here right now actually, uh, from Southwest Amiga Group did me a great deal on this. He basically sold it to me for what he paid for it recently. And it was fully boxed, as you can see there, all the polys are intact. That standard power supply will stay in there and never come out now. Um, but the system is very clean and I paid £40, which is an absolute bargain, I think. And I think this is going to get a lot of use at future events now I've got the flash cart because there's so much on there to play. Um, like I say, the flash cart was about £70 and the case for it is about £12. So for a setup like this, you're only talking about £100 to £150. And that's giving you the entire library, so you can't go wrong. It's already got the two controllers with it, and you'll find a lot of these in great condition still. Buy an aftermarket power supply, definitely worth it, and then go this way, and you've got yourself a cool little system to, to try out. And if you like computer-style games but want the convenience of this... Oh, there we go. Dave's just given a little bit of the story. It was given to a charity shop in Biddeford, and he sold it to Dave, so yeah, thank you for that Dave, I do appreciate it. And uh, hookups like this are really good, especially when I'm, I'm having to 
splurge my money on much more expensive uh, consoles for my collection. Uh, I was glad to get this at such a good price. I've been after one for a while. Uh, one of these boards, Tony, you're looking at about £70 for the flash cart. But the cool thing is it will work on this and the other Amstrad family computers. So it's it's worth getting if you own any of those because any of the ones that have got the cartridge slot, you can use this on there and you can load it up with all the games that you need to. So we'll just pop back out of that. Very easy to navigate menu, one to go in, two to go out. You can see we've got uh, demos. Um, uh, we've got, and then we've got a category, we've got homebrew, other and system. I'm not really sure what's in there. It's m probably mostly demos and things like that. I'm not really interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, but you've got all the GX4000 games. And then as you can see on here, called GX4000 port. Now this is what I was talking about. Um, because there wasn't a massive library for this system, uh, what people have done is they have taken some of the games are directly copied straight from 464, maybe had a little bit of code altered to make sure it executed properly on here without tape loading. Um, but others on here have been modified heavily, so certain parts of the menu have been removed. Anything that needed keyboard interaction or multi-loads, they've all been taken out and they've been restructured nicely into versions that will actually work with this. Now you can see by looking at the list, I mean, we've got some great titles on there. We've got, uh, there we go, we've got 1942, 1943. Quite a few of these as well have got trainers on them. So infinite lives, infinite credits and things like that. So they're all ready to go on there. So if you always struggle to get through these games, at least you've got an easy way of getting through them. Uh, there's probably some dedicated games on here. I'm not that familiar with the Amstrad library, so I can't really go into any detail about that. But I'm sure if any of you out there know these games well, I'll stop and I'll load one up. Uh, some of the ports on here, about on somewhere, I always describe the Amstrad as somewhere between the Spectrum and the Commodore 64, in that the graphic level was probably about the same as um, a Spectrum, but the colour level was closer to that of the Commodore 64. So that's the best way to describe, you know, the Amstrad. Yeah, exactly, Dave. You know, they messed up with the C64 game system. We were talk I was talking about this today with Jason. I've, t I've taken uh, my Sharp SF1 over to a guy called Jason. I'll be talking about him in another video on here. He He's going to be doing the repair on my Sharp SF1 Super Famicom TV. And we were discussing this, and I mentioned I'd picked up a GX4000, and he was on about the uh, C64 GS. They actually did similar mistakes with this. Batman, which was included, still had a keyboard option on the menu, even though there's no obvious, obvious way to, to to use a keyboard. They never even took that out straight at the factory, which is stupid. It is, Benny, it is. Uh, my, S my SF1, Dave, um, it's got uh, graphics artifacts. Um, so it's either bad RAM or possibly a bad PPU chip. Could even just be bad traces, but he's going to investigate and get that sorted for me. It does work, I just want to get it fully working. Oh, was the CPC your first one, Dave? That's that's nice to know. Considering you're a big Amiga guy, um, I, I never really realised what the progression was to get into into Amiga. I always thought it was the Commodore 64 boys who went on to Amiga. <laughs> but yeah, Benny, I mean, the, the Amstrad, it is a great in-between. That was what it was kind of heralded as, I suppose, back in the day. But it was maybe just a bit too late to market to gain any traction. Plus, it never really had its own mascot or kind of standout titles, if you know what I mean. I mean, if you ask, I, I ask someone to name, you know, an icon from the Spectrum, people will mention, you know, Minor Willie. You know, they'll mention Horace. You know, things like that. We talk about Commodore sixty four. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but there are some standout titles, you know. With the Amstrad, it never really got anything that made it stand out head and shoulders above the rest, which is why I think. It never really gained any traction, you know. And by the time it kind of built anything, it you were into the era of the consoles. And once the 8-bit system started fighting with the consoles, even the 16-bit uh, computers, the consoles were always going to win out because they were purpose-built for gaming, you know. So, yeah, but looking at this list, um, like I say, we've got a few poked um, ROMs on there. A bit further down, you'll see... There's actually a text file to go with some of these. And what that is, it's basically an instruction card because 
because some of these games use quite a few keyboard commands or quite a few keyboard keys to, to operate, there's a text file basically telling you what keys are matched to which buttons on the joypads. And rather, rather you know, smartly, the way you should do it, the, um, obviously, the primary one is player one's joypad. And then what they've done is if you need anything beyond up, down, left, right, one and two, they've mapped things to up, down, left, right on player two player two's joypad and to uh, one and two on player two's joypad as well as the pause button if needs be there's not many games that need to do that and any that do need heavy keyboard use like adventure games or simulators or things like that they they haven't bothered porting over because it just wouldn't work um but most of the 464 library has been transferred over which means you get access to a lot of the, the good arcade conversions you can see there, 720 degrees. I absolutely loved that on the Spectrum back in the day. The A-Team, that's, that's dating the console. Um, if we go across, you can see Afterburner, uh, Alien Storm, um, Arkanoid, A the simulator games from... Um, oh, who did the simulator games now? Uh, but anyway, yeah, uh, all of those are on here, Asterix. Uh, the original Barbarian and World of Barbarian. I'm not familiar with that. Um, Barry McGuigan Boxing, Badlands. That was a pretty good little racing game. Bart versus the Space Mutants. And you can see there, there's actually on the description, they've changed it so number two is jump. And there's another version there where up is, pro is programmed to jump. Yes, off we design Monty, another good game. Um... And there's the Batman games, uh, Bomb Jack. I was just trying to get that up a minute ago, um, but I'm not sure if it's fully mapped. Bubble Bobble, Boogie Boy, Cabal, uh, Captain Planet, Chucky Egg, of course. See, it's not that there weren't any good games for the Amstrad. It's the fact that they weren't exclusive. You know, a lot of these games, like Chucky Egg, they were available on the Spectrum and the Commodore too. So they never really found a footing as an icon for the system. If you know what I mean, it really needed their own mascot. That's that's what that's what I think anyway. Uh, Chase HQ. I think that's a very good port on here, just like the Spectrum version was. Um, Commando. That's a great game. Um, Camp Ducula. <laughs> Crazy Cars. Dan Dare. Cybernoid. Cybernoid, of course, very popular game on the Spectrum, uh, and. David Thompson games. I mean, we smashed a million joysticks with those back in the day. No, 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 not at all, Bobby. As I've already gone over it in the video, if you scroll back, I've got an I've got the aftermarket power supply recommended for this system from the good one from RS, not a cheap shitty one. So yeah, I did. I ordered that and had that come before I ordered the C4 CPC. I'll just go over that again, actually. Um, the reason, I mean, the stock power supply for the system was crap and fried several systems anyway. The C for CPC draws a bit more current than the standard cartridges do, uh, as a lot of flash cards do, in fact. And the reason you need the aftermarket power supply is because if you don't, it puts such a heavy choke on the power supply and the poorly built, there's no kind of surge protection. Uh, it not only blows the power supply, but it'll, it'll fry components inside the system and completely ruin it. That's why you have to get an aftermarket power supply uh, for this system, especially. You should get it anyway, but especially if you're using the flash card. Yeah, scroll back, Bobby. I've, I've covered quite a bit about the system. I mean, obviously, if you've got it, you know about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll show a couple of games in a second. I'm just de debating what to put on. If anybody sees a game they want to see on the Amstrad, maybe they never saw it or they've got fond memories... As I'm going through this, just shout it out and I'll, and I'll put it on. Uh, Dan Dare, the Dizzy Games, of course. Everybody loves the Dizzy Games. Uh, Double Dragon 3, I didn't know they did that for the Amstrad. And obviously Double Dragon 1 and 2. Weren't great games, if I, if I remember rightly. Dragon's Lair, oh my god, they did a Dragon's Lair version. Yeah, you're probably right, Dave. I mean, a lot of the systems that I've got either came with missing power supplies or... The power supplies are already on the way out when I bought them. So I, I have bought aftermarket power supplies. Although, not all power supplies are created equal. Not all power supplies are created equal. I've had power supplies where 
I've bought them brand new, but they're, you know, they are cheap Chinese rubbish and I end up frying those, you know what I mean? So you've got to, you, you, aftermarket power supplies will definitely be better. They're more efficient now um, and they're less likely to be faulty, but you've got to buy a good one. Don't buy the cheap crap. Don't buy the eBay's cheapest, you know what I mean? Uh, show Donkey Kong. Okay, I'll give that a, I'll give that a whirl. I've never seen Donkey Kong on this, so let's just fire that up. And then you just hit the one button. You can see it loads. And there you go. This one's got a trainer built in, so I'll actually do that because I'm not, I'm not being able to play it two-handed. There we go. I've got to be honest, that's a pretty detailed title screen. I'll give them that. It's very, uh, very red. But <laughs> it's there. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Tony. You see what I mean? That was that was Amstrad's failing. It never had anything that made it stand out in its own right. Make an Amiga power supply, Dave. Oh, yeah, it, it's 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 tricky, but I can I imagine it's probably the way to go. Finding a replacement uh, power supplies for Commodore sixty four was hard enough. I've got a couple now that need power supplies, so I should just be able to play this. Oh yeah, that's uh I've gotta say that's an amazing looking looking game. I'm not sure how it moves. Oh, I've got pretty power saving on this monitor turned on, I should have turned that off really. Keeps dimming out. Oh. Well the music leaves a bit to be desired. Oh I'm gonna die. Oh no, I'm invincible, aren't I? <laughs> Let's, grab, let's try and grab a hammer. So I'm trying to do this one handed. But... Oh, there we go. Oh, even the hammer's going through the barrels. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by that. That the screen flicker, by the way, it's only because of this TV's got into power save mode for some reason. Uh, it's dimmed it all out, so that's why it's looking like it's flickering. It's not actually flickering to my naked eye, so. Like I say, it's a bit of a franking cable that I'm using as well, which doesn't help. But the picture sharpness is pretty good. Uh, I'll try and get to the top. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good looking game. I'll, I'll give them that. Is this is this a later release or is this a, an early release? Uh, I'll turn it up a little bit, Tony. Hang on. That's the music. <laughs> Not really music. <laughs> it's not really present to the ears. So we get to the top at least. As far as eight bit, you know, put arcade ports go, it's very smooth, and it's not far off the arcade version. <laughs> fire that up now then. Oh, that looks really cool. Right, this is where I have a problem now. If I power this off and back on, it might compress the screen to the upper half. So, oh no, we got lucky. So right, what it was doing earlier, when I was turning it off and back on, because I'm not using the right cable and because I haven't set the telly up properly, it was crushing the image down to just be on the top half of the screen. So, I don't know. So, what do you reckon then, Benny? Metal Army? Let's give that a whirl then. too far oh it doesn't look it doesn't look like it's on here mate for some reason like I say this is this is the way I got it from the guy if it's not on there I'm imagining there's either a problem with it or I don't know it's not on there anyway sorry about that uh, if there's any more games you guys want to suggest I'll pop them on I'll, otherwise I'll chuck on a few of my arcade uh, my favorite arcade conversions and see how they look oh here we go let's uh I seem to remember playing this back in the day, Narc. I've I've looked at the GX four thousand. Actually, I'll I'll go to a couple now. Yeah, because I know the I know there are obviously not the dedicated games, but yeah, the the actual dedicated um, GX four thousand games. Not many of those are fantastic. I mean, the standard one, the packing game, was this. So I, I suppose I should show people what this is. 
I mean, the music's cool, you know. It's good AY music. Nice animated title screen, you know, it's a passable console game. And obviously this was modified to show press fire, fire one and fire two rather than the keys. It does play CPC Benny, but it only plays games that don't need any keyboard interaction. Some of them do have problems. It's not 100% compatible. <laughs> it's all right, Gareth, you can just be in the fire starter. So I'll start this up anyway, I'll show people this. I can play this one-handed because you have to press up to accelerate, so. Not the greatest, you know, racing game in the world, but it's, it's not bad, you know. For an 8-bit system, the animation's pretty good. You know, the graphics are nice and colourful. Sound effects are passable. Whoa, oh, big crash. So yeah, so that's burning rubber anyway. I haven't got a favourite game on this town. I mean, I like the classics. I was playing Our Mummy earlier, you know, that's one of the more basic, you know, early games. Um, I'll quickly show Pang actually. I was quite enjoying a game of Pang earlier. Um, so I'll flip this off. Hopefully the image, oh, there you go. See how it shrunk to the top of the screen. So I should be able to rectify that once the game starts, but I'll try that, I'll try and do that in just a sec. Um, see what other dedicated GX4000 games I can show you. Oh, Pang is one of them, so I'll fire up Pang. And I think if I turn the TV into standby and then pop it back on, give it a second, it should come up and it should go into the proper aspect ratio. Yeah, that's right, Bob. So if anybody needs those games or wants to check them for reference, they're on there. I know Trapdoor was converted, but that's not on here either, and I absolutely love Trapdoor, so I'm going to have to dig that out. Yeah, it is very much like able on that game, Tony, yeah. yeah. Harrier attack, yeah, Roland. Roland in the caves. But yeah, Pang, I mean, looking at this now, we are looking more, you know, familiar kind of Sega, Nintendo, 8-bit kind of quality, if you know what I mean, console game style, you've got a colourful title screen, nice animated, you know, instruction card. I'll try and play this one-handed. This, of course, is a, a two-player game, which is quite cool. Not many computer games had full two-player mode, which sucked. I apologise if this is on the piss. I'm trying to look at my phone. See, I really need a tripod if I'm going to carry on doing these streams. It annoys me to watch them back and see me filming on the piss. <laughs> I've got a gimbal, but you need to hold that either way, even if you're playing. Uh, oh, completed the level. <laughs> so there's there's Pang, anyway. Quite a cool game. Trapdoor's not on the list yet. I, th I, th I read that it was. I may I'm be mistaken. I have to see if somebody can do it. There's rec there are requests on the C for CPC forums or the Amstrad forums for people to convert certain games. Trapdoor, I'd love to get on there. Uh, I'm not sure what the frame rate is, Tony, but the, the animation's very smooth. I was always under the impression that the Amstrad had massive problems with scrolling the same way the Spectrum did because the Spectrum used to have to draw an entire screen at a time. And even though there were ways round that and people worked out ways to get round that and make it look smoother, I heard the Amstrad didn't have good scrolling at all. But you know, the actual animation on the uh, the characters seems to be pretty good on this. So that's Pang, so let's see if there's any more that people want to see. Um, let's do it again, look, stupid thing. Um, <laughs> On the plus side, Barbarian 2, Batman the Movie, 
Burning Rubber, Cop 271, Crazy Cars, Dick Tracy, Fire and Forget, Mystical, Clax, Navy Seals, No Exit, Operation Thunderbolt, Pang, Panzer Kickboxing, Pinball Magic, Plotting, Pro Tennis Tour, Robocop 2, Skeet Shoot. Yeah, and I've switched blade. That was the one I wanted, um, Gareth told me to check out, so I'll load that up. There you go, you can see there, so I'm going to go down and splash screen. Boogie Boy, I'll give that a try in a minute, actually, Tony. Right, I'll see if like, that same trick works again. I'll just quickly put in standby and back on again. And see if we can get it to come up in full screen this time. I, th I don't know whether it's the, the franking cable I'm using or whether it's just the way this TV handles the signal, but it, it's, it seems to have done that the whole time I've been using this, and I'm not sure why. It doesn't do it on any other console, so... Switchblade 2. I've never played the original Bob, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, there we go. I've got full screen again. Now. I don't know how easy this is going to be to try and play one handy, but bear with me. I'll try and do something. It's got a quite a detailed story at the start, I suppose. Music's all right. Animation's passable. How he does little kickboxing moves. I only can charge up moves as well, I see in the corner there. Oh, two is jump. That, that's better. That's more like proper platforming. Two is jump. Yeah, look like that. Do I have to punch it or is it just a bit of background scenery? Oh, there we go. Just points, is it? Ah, oh, he didn't come all the way towards me. Oh, I'm getting my ass kicked. Oh, no. Oh, I'll get the hell out of there. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm making up as I go along. How do you kill the... Do you have to do the squat thing? Well, that's annoying. <laughs> I think that's a game I could get into with a bit of practice and two hands to do it, obviously. <laughs> I'll try and get me um, I'm going to try and get me a mini table tripod and an upright tripod because I'm doing a lot of these streams now and I'd rather do it properly you know what I mean I mean ideally you do a direct feed but this is I'm trying to keep it going the style you know this is Facebook I am covering hardware and I want to be able to just show the hardware as it sits you know on how it would look on your table what it looks like looks like hooked up to your TV and that so I've got to try and keep it real you know I'm not a professional friggin' YouTuber or Twitch streamer, you know what I mean? So, let's uh, kill that then. Let's see what else we can uh, fire up. Let's, we're going to go back to the, the GX4000 port now. Let's see what I can uh, what I can pull up on here. Um, let's go with the original Barbarian. Everybody loves the original Barbarian. Good head chopping. First first taste of gore that was for some people. Seeing it uh seeing some doogies head chopped off on this. Very violent for back in the day. <laughs> Let's give this a second to come back on. It should come back on your full screen, hopefully. Fingers crossed. It's rather annoying that, but obviously I won't be playing that on this TV. This is just a TV I haven't took back to the unit yet, one we use for events. Uh, I obviously wouldn't try and pair that with this in future. Um, right, practice. One forest, two plane, thrown in an arena. And you can see there they've mapped it. So um, you can press button one or button two to pick one player or two player and then left or right to um, choose where you want to fight. Uh, we'll go with throne room. There we go. And the good thing is, no loading screens and that is awesome. I'll see if I can cut his damn head off. Probably won't get a look in, but let's give it a try. There we go. The only move you ever wanted to do is to cut their damn head off, and I'm going to try and do it. Do they want to look? I'm gonna... Oh, got him. There we go. <laughs> and the little. A little green dude 
drags his body off and kicks his head out. Awesome. Nice colourful, one of the first kind of face to face, head on versus fighters I played this was. The Commodore 64 version, I think it was actually the version I used to play a lot, but I did have it on the Spectrum as well. So I'll get this dude as well in the green. I doubt he's got me cornered, but might go lucky swing. Come on. Oh, I thought that was it then. He ducked out of the way. You can win this just by rolling into him and then kicking up the corner, but I just really wanted to get that. Oh, he's got me. <laughs> but yeah, another great um, standard computer game there. On the ST, yeah, it was pretty good on the ST. It is nice the way the screen's dressed. I suppose that made, you know, because you obviously got small sprites, you know, and not a lot of animation going on, at least having a nice, you know, screen dressing like that made it look a lot better. Better than just having a standard hood at the bottom of the screen. Not a fan of the game, Bob, honestly. I'm always really a big fan of it. Honestly, it looks fantastic. You know, I'd say, I mean, the, the Commodore always, although it had full colour, it always bugged me. The The Commodore palette was quite drab. You know, it was, it was, it was browns and beiges and off-reds and things like that. The, com the Amstrad palette, it's a lot wider, you know. I don't know if it's got more colours on screen, but it certainly looks like it has. You know, I mean, I can see there's obviously red, orange and yellow in the, in the, um, in the header there. Uh, dark blue, light blue. Uh, you've got various shades of green there in the snakes. You've got purples, pinks, various shades of pink. It looks better in reality than it does on here, obviously, as well. Uh, there's greys, there's blacks. You know, it, it's really colourful. Impressive looking game to show off, I suppose. Let's see if we can find something with a bit more action. I have to do the stupid thing with the screen again, but let's, let's find out, see what else we can find. But like I say, it's cool to have the... I wouldn't recommend getting one of these without the C4 CPC because although it's non-authentic to not have, to have anything but the original 20 whatever games, I wish there was other systems that weren't limited, you know, in, in the type of games it could have. And obviously this this isn't limited at all. You've got the entire 464 library, you know, there's fucking hundreds of games on here. Beat em ups on the computers were always terrible anyway. You need proper joy pads or an arcade, you know, arcade control panel for that. Yeah, there, there were only a few games that used the 464 plus enhancements, and I think that just, I think the only, all, all it actually did was boost the number of available colours on static images and a few extra, I think it was a couple of extra channels on the sound. Um, was it Boogie Boy you wanted to see, Tony? We'll, we'll get that up, hang on. There we go, Boogie Boy. Um, but yeah, um, there are a few games enhanced for it, and a few of them are different again from the 464 Plus versions. I'll just do my stupid screen trick again. Or attempt to, anyway. There we go. Give it a second to power back on. It's a slow um, standby wake up this is on this telly. Considering it's a Sony, you know. So, please be full screen. There we go. So you can see it's already defaulted to joystick. And I don't think it lets you select the other one. Select your course by moving control up and down and then press fire. Let's go with the standard course. Well, I'll have to end the stream shortly. I'm running out of battery, but. So it looks like neither of the buttons are there. That's the shift. Yeah, it's up to accelerate, just like it was on the Amstrad. And then we go into high gear. Not a bad little game, actually. Controls pretty well. I mean, I'm doing this one handed, admittedly. Oh, white tape. <laughs> right into loud here. Oh, that's quite a cool effect for, for the Amstrad, you know what I mean? And I think the Spectrum would have done it as well as that. 
Are you supposed to collect the flags or? Oh. Oh, I'm moving some speed now. Oh. <laughs> Spin dizzy. Oh, let's have a look at that. So that was Boogie Boy anyway. Sorry for the shakiness. Well, I'm getting a bit tired. <laughs> I'll give um, I'll give Spin Dizzy a whirl, and then I think I'll end it there because I've got to charge my phone. I th I'm pretty sure Spin Dizzy will be on the list. And I think it is called Spin Dizzy on the Amstrad. So. Area, spell there and spin dizzy there we go and again I'll do my uh, infinite time yeah I'll, I'll bang that on just for the sake of this there we go load up <laughs> yeah no problem Tony This should come up in full screen again now. Sorry for the delay. There we go. And you can see there, fire button, one play, on two side scores. Yeah, two on the left player scores, two on the right controller gives help. So, fully modified to play with the joypad. Absolutely suck at this game, I'll be honest. I'm gonna try and get the crystals in you. Not as colourful as I would have thought, but um I mean it seems to animate well. Oh. <laughs> oh into the water. I think with one hand I'd be able to do I mean with two hands I'll be able to do this a lot better. And I've got full control of it. So anyway. That was the Amstrad GX4000 and the C4 CPC. Um, tidy little system. I recommend if you're looking to expand your collection, want to buy something and try something new, get one of these. It's very well. I'd say it's it's effects. It's it's uh, you know, it's an inexpensive system to buy. It's an accessible way into Amstrad gaming. And if you have got any of the Amstrad computers, you've then got. You know, if you get one of these carts, you've also got all your games covered on there as well. It does give you a good choice of connectivity. You know, buy yourself a replacement power supply. That's that's an absolute must because otherwise you end up throwing your system eventually. Um, but yeah, um, it comes with everything you need. You can find these boxed quite easily. Uh, I reckon for less than a hundred pound, you'll easily get one of these systems. And they're generally in good condition, and then you can pick up the power supply and a C for CPC. I wouldn't bother trying to collect games for this unless you're hardcore. It's going to cost you a lot of money, and you, you, you'll struggle to track them all down, I'll be honest. So, pretty soon this will be making its way to the uh, revival events. So, anybody who goes to revival, you'll get a chance to maybe give this a proper whirl if you've never given it the time of day before. And, um, but anyway, uh, thanks for viewing my first video on my new. On my new page, Yam Yam Gaming, and I think pretty soon I'm going to be doing more videos, and I'll be doing them on this channel because it just makes more sense to keep them all in one place. So um, I've got some things on order, uh, which I think people are really going to want to see. I like collecting hardware. I like collecting rare consoles, and on its way, I have um, I've never owned a PC engine. That's on its way, but I might might wait for a video on that until I get the super sd system 3 for it um i've got a usb gd rom coming which will be plumbed plumbed into my dreamcast and modifying that so it doesn't need to use discs and i've got an fm towns marty coming which not many people have even heard of and there's some pretty cool games available on that so once they once they all arrive i'll set up everything here again hopefully get myself a tripod and we'll do us another live stream yeah appreciate that gareth mate um, but take it easy. Thanks for watching. Catch you soon.